Flexspace has been unbelievably popular. You guys are loving it on this channel. So I figured we would do a story of the deal and get the behind the scenes look at a very creative Flexspace development here in Nashville. So this is Eastside Yards. So Eastside Yards is a three building, 9,000 square foot property that currently has three tenants. Brennan is also taking advantage of some pretty creative ways to monetize this property that I think you guys are going to love. I was looking for a property that was on a decent sized lot, but that had some structures that I could rent out. That's my buddy, Brandon Thornberry. He started off as a residential real estate investor before getting into multifamily and commercial. He also has his own debt fund and he is a partner in my peerless mill project. So excited to be walking through with him on this project today. Thanks, sir. How's it going? What did the building used to be? So in the 30s, this was a gas station. Then after that, it was a junkyard for international scouts. It was just, you know, horrible shape. So you couldn't really walk very well through this building. It was just full of car parts. Initially, it was just coming in and getting all that out. So I partnered with somebody who just wanted the metal. And so they came in and cleaned out a lot of it for free. Uh, we put a new roof on this building. We uh, installed the HVAC, put some new doors on. I was on the hunt for what people call a covered land play. So a covered land play is essentially where you buy a piece of land that is income producing and allow it to sit for five, seven, 10 years because because you know that you are in the path of growth and development, and that property is going to be worth significantly more in the long run. Typically on a covered land play, you're not investing a lot of money into the property because it's likely going to be torn down and redeveloped into something new. You just wanna make sure that it cash flows, covers your debt, and hopefully pays you a little bit in the meantime. Originally, I was thinking I'll buy this, I'll own it for a little bit, and then I'll sell it. But as we went along, I discovered that I really had a passion for supplying affordable spaces for creative tenants. Now I've kind of fallen in love with the property and don't really have any you know, immediate plans to sell it. So it's kind of changed. Yeah, so this is the guitar shop space and uh, just a little section of this drum shop. They've definitely been able to take the coziness of their old space and bring it over to this larger space and keep the vibe. Hey Andy, would you mind showing us where you make drums? various tubes of drum shells and things that get shipped in in like full length and then they're cut to depth on our table saw rig here so that's maybe cut down to the depth that's ordered yeah pretty old school so it was cool walking the space with andy because he immediately was like oh i could do this here and do this here and so he had the vision for as, it. Yeah. yeah as an owner you're like you know you get excited when your tenant partner is getting excited about the space yeah. too the great thing about flex space is that there are so many different potential uses that you could have within this building as you can see at this drum shop not only do they have retail at the very front so that customers can stop by and actually buy the drums but they actually have manufacturing on site as well which makes it very convenient for the tenant to have both of their operations in one location. Man, this is a cool room. Yeah. So this is the symbol room for the drum shop. Originally, this was retail space for the old junkyard. First impression of walking through this property was coming into this space and it was rough. <laughs> and you still bought it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I love about real estate is that you can really get creative. And if you can see through the junk that's lying around or the roof being collapsed in, yep. there's opportunity there. Yeah. You just gotta be the person that's willing to take that work on. When we were putting drums y'all on the top, we misjudged and couldn't fit the D on. So it said rum shop for a while. Really? <laughs> hey, hey, you cool, met man. Tyler before, hey. right? Yeah, good yeah. to see you again. Thanks for letting us tour through the space. Yeah, it's just my studio now. Come on back, man. I'll show you, I've got some of the, the things out, like uh, this is a oh, little cool. uh, room. I'm gonna pitch it to different museums. Yeah. Uh, the, the goal is you step inside and experience kind of an overwhelming sense of a single color. Take note as we're going throughout the tour and notice that not all of these spaces are super fancy, super finished out. Brandon did a great job of working with the right tenants who appreciated what they have with the block walls and the exposed ceilings to create unique workspaces from what was already existing without Brandon or the tenant necessarily having to come in and spend a significant amount of money. The tough thing with this property was I wasn't really sure what type of tenant I was gonna be able to get. Early on, I didn't really want to sink 
a ton of capital into it. And now that I've learned that there's such a huge demand from the artist community for this type of space, moving forward, what I'd like to do is just white box buildings better and just make them look less scary from day one. There are many different definitions of white box, but at the end of the day, really what it means is that you are preparing the space almost 95% of the way so that a tenant can come in with their specific finishes. Early on, I was talking to different restaurant, coffee shop tenants for the front building. And when we started looking at that build out, oh yeah, we were looking at $400,000. The, the drum supply was just a much better fit for the type of building that was. Don't overthink building out your space. As Brandon found out as he was going through this process, anything that involves grease trap, a kitchen, or more intensive build outs was going to be more expensive than he cared to spend on the property for the type of returns that he wanted to see. So while that may confine you to a certain specific set of tenants that are willing to take that, that's not a big deal at all. Just make sure that you focus your marketing efforts to those tenants. That could be any of your blue collar trades like plumbers, electricians, but you can see here that Brandon found a drum shop. He's got some really interesting other businesses that are temporarily occupying some space too. What do we have back here? Yeah, so this is what we call the shop at Eastside Yards. So we rent out this space for music videos, photo shoots, and then we also have the tiny house at Eastside Yards. And so we rent that out for photo shoots and music videos, and that's been really fun. Over here where we have the shipping containers, so we brought these in, and my plan is to use these for additional content creation spaces. Let's go walk through those and okay. check those out. I yeah. want to I want to learn some more about why you decided to do that. So you're not signing leases on these. like Are right. they on Ave or Peer Space, and that's kind of how you're monetizing these? Yeah, so these are going to be on Ave and Peer Space. I'd like to see something like um, an infinity mirror room in one section yeah. of these where you can step in and just get that really cool content creation vibe. That'd be so neat. those types of things for these these containers. Ave and Peer Space are essentially the Airbnb for commercial properties. You can put your commercial property up there for rent by the hour for photo shoots, video shoots. It's a great way to make additional income on your properties without having to sign or find a longer term tenant. Where'd you it's, find these? Uh, there is a appliance store up the street. I've been going in there for years. One day I was in there and they were like, yeah, today's our last day. And I had noticed they had two shipping containers behind the store. I just said, what are you guys doing with those? And so we worked out a deal where I bought both containers for four grand. Now I know shipping containers have been trending as well and finding a pair for $4,000 is unbelievably cheap, but there's a couple of lessons to take out of that. One, Brandon just asked if he could buy them. That's something that we should all be doing as real estate investors is asking and thinking about things at all times that could possibly benefit our properties in different ways. Two, he was able to get essentially two new spaces onto his site for under $6,000. And once you add a coat of paint and make them a little more interesting, he's now able to rent them out by the hour on Ave and Peer Space. So this little building we call the tiny house. And when I had bought the property, it had totally caved in, the roof had caved in, there was no floor. I wasn't really sure what to do with it. Just decided to go ahead and put it back together. Yeah, so people, they rent just this space for photo shoots and video shoots. That's kind of the concept moving forward with this backspace is to have different sets and scenes. Like we're gonna have the camper at Eastside Yard so somebody can come rent the camper and do a scene there. The tiny house, we've got the workshop. Why do you think you were able to get such a good deal on the property? So this was a distressed property. It, uh, in the 1930s, the front building was a gas station. There were underground storage tanks that were still left from the 30s. And so I could not get a bank to give me a loan uh, without those storage tanks being removed. And the seller didn't want to mess with it. When you're working with industrial properties, it's good to pay attention to any potential environmental concerns that may be with the property. You don't know if there were chemical spills or if the land was used as a landfill at some point. So you'll want to call an environmental engineer to come out and do what's called a phase one environmental report, which will review the site and tell you what is or is not okay with what you have on that property. I ended up taking some 1031 funds and some cash and just buying it with cash with the intent of coming in and cleaning it up. 
and then taking it back to a bank and getting financing later. Don't let the fact that Brandon couldn't get financing on this property scare you away from looking at flex space or industrial in general. Not every property is going to have environmental concerns and there are ways for you to mitigate those risks before you actually purchase the property so that you can make your lender happy and close with a loan. But sometimes sellers don't really want to work with your timeline even though they need to sell the property. So it was worth it for Brandon to go ahead, close in cash, remediate the issues, and then refinance with a new loan. How did you get comfortable knowing, okay, I can remediate this and yeah. I can secure some debt on this afterwards? I took the approach of, okay, this is, this is intimidating, but let's just really dial in how much it's actually gonna cost. And so I got a quote for how much it would cost to remove those storage tanks, and it came back at about $25,000. And so I just evaluated that of, hey, I'm paying 800. It's gonna cost me 25 grand to take those tanks out. Plus I'm gonna maybe spend 10, 15 grand just cleaning up the rest of the property. And so I felt really good about being all in at 840 for some clean dirt that's worth two and a half million. You know, a confused mind says no. And so I think when people are looking at properties like this, they have no idea what it's gonna cost. And so it just freaks most people out. And then they just say, no, that's not for me because it's just too intimidating. Yeah. But if you dig in and you figure it out, it's not that scary. So Brandon found this property and bought it for $800,000, 9,000 square feet. I hear all the time, oh, commercial space is way too expensive. You can't buy it. There's no way. And here you go. Brandon did it. It's very easy to find if you were out there looking for it. You want to make sure that you're talking to commercial real estate brokers all the time, you're making your own cold calls, or you're sending letters out to property owners. But these deals are out there and you can find them. Now, if you want to make a deal like this work, you got to get creative. And that's exactly what he did. He thought outside of the box, how can we fix up these spaces in a way that's going to fit my budget? How can we find tenants that are going to appreciate what we have here? And he got the deal together. So if you wanna start getting creative with your deals, check out this video here on creative financing for commercial properties.